Hi, I'm Cricket Liu, Vice President of Architecture and Technology here at Infoblox. If you're thinking of participating in World IPv6 Day, here are some tips that might help you add the necessary records to DNS. Here we've got an example, thoughtfully provided to us by Facebook, of the address, or actually quad A record, that Facebook added in order to support IPv6 on their web server. You can see over here on the left hand side, it's attached to the domain name www.v6.facebook.com. The record type is quad A, which is different from A, right? A records accept uh, standard IPv4 addresses in the right hand side. A quad A record expects an IPv6 address. And over there on the right hand side in the R data field, you have Facebook's IPv6 address, which is kind of clever. You can see that it's 2620 colon zero colon one CFE colon face colon B zero zero C, which is as close as they could get to book, colon colon three. So this is the standard eight quartet representation of an IPv6 address. Every one of those uh, numbers or letters represents a single hexadecimal digit and they're grouped into four, but you can abbreviate them. Anytime you have a, a leading zero, for example, uh, at the end there, they have a three. That's just shorthand for zero, 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 three. If you have an octet that's all zeros, uh, as they do for their, I'm sorry, a quartet that's all zeros, as they do for their second quartet, you can represent that as a single zero. And if you have a whole bunch of contiguous zeros, you can represent that as a pair of colons, like they do towards the end. So before you go adding those quad A records to your zone data, you ought to understand something about the implications. Um, some very bright guys over at Yahoo, including Igor Gashinsky, recognized that there was a potential problem with this. If you have a domain name that owns both address, that is IPv4, and quad A, that is IPv6 records, then there are certain DNS resolvers out there that will always prefer to look up those quad A records, even though those computers that run those resolvers may not have global IPv6 connectivity. Uh, the estimates are, according to Yahoo, that that's about 0.05% of the internet population. Google uh, estimates that a little bit larger at 0.078% of the population. But if you've got a lot of users, that still may be quite a number of people and quite a number of potential calls to your help desk. What happens to those people is, they send a query, they get a quad A record back that they can't use, and they have to wait for their browser uh, or other client to time out before trying the regular address record. And uh, Gashinsky estimates that it takes between 21 and 186 seconds for that fallback to happen, which is an awfully long time. There are ways to deal with that. One way to deal with that is a mechanism that's new to bind. Uh, it's called filter quad A and filter quad A on V6. Uh, it's covered in the administrator's resource manual, but if you're interested, basically they give you the ability to lie, to tell your name server if you receive a query, even if it's a query explicitly for quad A records, but the query comes in over IPv4, pretend that there's no IPv6 address, and then wait for a consequent uh, address record query. Uh, of course, if a regular IPv6 born quad A query arrives, you'll still answer that with a quad A record. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you again.